Welcome to the Film Trooper Podcast with your host, Scott McMahon. Hey everyone, I'm just going to jump right into this episode because this is part two um, and hopefully you've listened to part one, which was how to market your indie film, part one. This is how to market your indie film, part two, with uh, uh, Jamie Benyon and Lucy Jordan. And we're doing a film marketing case study. It's sort of a workshopping their film. And uh, so, yeah, let's jump right into it. You'll hear in this episode or this segment of, uh, of our session, we kind of go into talking about recutting their trailer, uh, time management. Like, even though you might come up with a lot of great ideas of how to market and get your film ready um, for the online market, there's a reality of bandwidth and time management, and we get kind of into that kind of stuff, as well as trying to delve into seriously what you're selling and in order to get your marketing message um, on par with what you're actually selling. And we go into the, the you know, traditional marketing speak, which is like market or you you sell the benefits, not the features, and how that applies to your independent film. And we talk about possibly changing the title because after you do all this work, you may have to go back and change the title of your film to make it more marketable. Um, we talk about give it, uh, concepts of free giveaways to build your audience as well, how to uh, build up to the release, to the actual release and distribution of your film uh, going forward. And there's other things we get into. So without further ado, here is part two of how to market your indie film with Jamie Benyon and Lucy Jordan uh, here on the Film Trooper podcast. All right, I want to get to, um, let's talk about the trailer. So the trailer, um, you know, candidly, I think it needs to be recut. And I want to, but I have a, a fun suggestion of how to do so. Have oh. you seen the film? I'm going to give you three films. Have you seen the film? Uh, you don't have to see the film, but have you ever seen the trailer or know about the film from Jodie Foster back in 1995 called Home for the Holidays? So Home for the Holidays uh, has, it's like Robert Downey Jr. It's got um, um, Holly Hunter. Anyway, so there's a, 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 you know, Holly Hunter goes back home for the holidays and she's got to deal with her crazy family. There's another film you've probably seen a couple of years ago come out, uh, Mel Streep and um, um, gosh, shoot, Julia Roberts uh, called August Osage County. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then there's another film that sort of came on the radar. I saw it like on HBO. It was uh, This Is Where I Leave You. Um, it was with Tina Fey, um, Jason Bateman, mm -hmm. uh, Adam Driver. Um, it was an amazing cast. Again, these are an ensemble family, you know, uh, well, since my my film my podcast sometimes we're able to cuss. It's like these films are like a real clusterfuck, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. So what I wanted what I wanted to is I will give you these links to these uh, these trailers, um, but if you look at them, they like right off the bat. If you you know like Home for the Holidays is a 1995 trailer, so it has a like an old school vibe. It has like the uh, the narrator come in. So you see like a little clip of like Holly Hunter dealing with like she's going to the airport. She's and it's like the narrator comes in, you know, for so and so, you know, her, you know, things are falling apart. And then she's got to go. What she has to do is like go home for the holidays. And then it's like just, you know, it's it's kind of cheesy that way. But it's interesting because at least you can see sort of the constructs of the, of setting up the story, which is like, here's your main character. Here's her problem. And here's all the craziness that she's going to have to deal with. Okay. And then if you look at like August Osage County, um, you know, the really like they're like the trailer was just like Julia Roberts going home, you know, um, because they found out like their, their dad had died, you know, so it's like for a funeral. So you go to this funeral and they got to, you know, deal with all this stuff. Um, and it's, you see all the different, you know, families coming together. Obviously what's interesting about those films is like, it's a celebrity, you know, I guess a celebrity, um, I'm lo looking for the word, just the number of celebrities in it. That's what's yeah. kind of fun. It's like the, the ensemble cast. So then there's another one. Uh, this is where I leave you. It's just, it's much more, it's much funnier in a, in a sense because you see Jason Bateman, they start off the, the trailer, starts off with Jason Bateman, walks in to his wife having sex with her, her boss. And, you know, but it's funny because he's like, how long has this been going on? The wife's like, you know, for a year. But the the, the, the guy, the boss is like, you know, for a day. What? No. Well, on the side, you know, like it's like it's like the whole point is it, it's the funniest characters. 
But then he's falling apart, and his sister, played by Tina Fey, calls him and says, Dad died. You got to come home. And, and you see all the craziness with this family. Um, but it, 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 what it is is like the one dying wish of the, the father was to have all the kids under one roof. And so the mother, played by Jane Fonda, grounds the kids. They're all adults for one week to stay in the house as a wish to the, 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 the dad who died. So what I'm saying is like each one of these films – it has the same kind of like premise. It's a cra- like craziness of a family get together, but right away it sets up at least some sort of pr- t- protagonist. One of the characters you're following, and the problem like what is the problem and where they where they have to go. So I noticed that the the initial trailer you guys presented um, utis- utilizes the Hall of uh, I forget the music again because I used it before a Hall of the King the yeah. Goblin King. What's his name? Edward. Greek. 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 Yeah. It's called Hall of the Mountain King or something. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, um, so it's really fun. It's been used a lot. It's a very, very great, you know, piece of music. But there's no dialogue yet. I'm, you know, like, mm-hmm. the, the, we, I have no idea. Like, I just see images of a, a, yeah. of a, a vast array of different types of characters. Again, as an audience who doesn't know anything about your film, they'll be like, I don't know who any of these people are. And then, like, I don't know, there's no known actor, no, you know, there's not, like, one person, like, oh, I've seen that person before. So you have to go, okay, but I know you have dialogue there. So you're probably, one trick you can do is literally when I give you these links of these three trailers, you watch them, and then see if you can't just cut and paste your own movie into these trailers. Meaning, like, uh, if you take like uh, uh, August Osage County or something, or uh, probably more fun like Home for the Holidays. Uh, I, actually, I'll give you do this one. This <laughs> the last one. This is where I leave you. So because it's more it's more recent. It was like done like right right before uh, uh, Adam Driver became famous from Star Wars. So this is where I leave you is more of a modern day trailer. The way it's cut. So you see the Jason Bateman's character, you know, having this problem. Well, you can you can ask yourself where in our film do we have something similar that has like a similar problem, and then just take your clips and just you know overlay it on top of this other trailer. Um, what will eventually happen is like it'll help you kind of construct how maybe to set up your story or set up your trailer because you may actually may have a lot of this not say the same elements, but you might have elements that you can see like oh okay okay because you know once you get in the editing phase. If you have a template to start working with, by the time you look at what you do have, you can fine tune it to make it much more what your film is about. But I think that would be helpful for an audience like myself or somebody who doesn't know anything about your film is if I've seen all these things pop up, like, you know, every family's got a secret. You know, what if, you know, what if it all revealed one day? What fun or like what family secrets do you have? And I see it like a place for me to share my secrets. And then I'll, and next thing I know, it's like sponsored by this movie. If I click the trailer and the movie just shows me like here's the protagonist or here's the here's the problem they're going to face with and like all the crazy fun stuff that might happen. And, you know, if you base it upon some other um, uh, trailer, at least, you know, you're in the right ballpark, you know, Uh, that would be helpful because that'd be a very helpful selling tool. You know, if we're talking about the marketing standpoint of things. So, um and I've done it before where I was like, well, how do I start this trailer? I literally just grabbed another trailer and I was like, what's the first two shots that they put in their trailer? Do I have something like that in my movie? And I did that. And then I did the same thing over and over. And then once I figured out, like I kind of laid, laid my clips on top of what they did. And I was like, Oh, then I can go back and fine tune my edit. And I found my, my trailer, but at least it was, it's coming from a very good model and a very good foundation. But I would recommend looking to recut the trailer um, because I know you probably have some great dialogue. Because yeah, you yeah, mentioned yeah. that you did some good, like a lot of work to make sure you got good sound, and yeah. that would be really helpful for an audience who knows nothing about your film to really get a good grasp of like, oh, so this is what the film is. Yeah. Well, that we well to be honest, that that trailer that you've seen is a t- is our teaser trailer. Mm-hmm. So we we made that knowing full well that we hadn't included dialogue. And that recently <laughs> I, I had cut together doing strangely exactly what you said. I looked at the Dr. Strangelove trailer that Stanley Kubrick had done. And 
made a new trailer based on that and showed it to Lucy and Lucy went, no, that's just, <laughs> no, that just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm Stanley Kubrick, but you know, we did it's try. It's not the same sort of film. So yeah, yeah, yeah. the thing is that obviously there's a certain construct or template that works with certain genres for how to present what goes on and that maybe that's why that didn't work. Yeah. But it, it's such a simple thing, but again, something that I would need to be told and yeah. reminded that it's really easy to do. Yeah, yeah. But I, I like, you know, as well, obviously for the cast that we had used, they, they have been asking us wh- how we're getting on, you know, what's going on, our family and friends. So for us to kind of just give them this one minute teaser trailer of no dialogue, yes. just images, music, you know, it kind of sums it up in like a really sort of blunt way, but it's enough to kind of get them off. it was really off. nice to just put something out yeah, there. Yeah, just give I them something. Because I think sometimes you feel like it doesn't exist. And it mm-hmm. was like, do you know what? We need to put something out because it needs to feel very tangible and very real. Yeah. And so that was a cheap way of, of doing it. Yeah, yeah. but we had always we always knew that we would need to do a full trailer, like you said, and that's the way we'll approach this next one, I think, yeah. properly and do it like that. Yeah, and here's the thing for anybody, you know, listening to all this stuff is... The great thing about the online world is like it doesn't really matter. You could put as much stuff as you want out there because we're inundated with so much noise and like content that for me to remember, like if you had shown me this trailer and then months go by later and there's a second trailer comes out, you know, I'm not going to remember the first one. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's like because it's okay. It's a a fun part about all this stuff is you can put a bunch of stuff out and – Either it works or doesn't work. You know, maybe like a handful of people see it, but it's not like those handful of people are going to be so like if they didn't have a good impression of what you were showing, it's going to be detrimental to the life of your film. Like, yeah. So it's, you, yeah. So Scott, would you say that it's worth create like us sitting down and creating more, obviously, loads of trailers and just keep putting them out up until like the release of the film, or should we just have the one full length sort of trailer that we just keep sharing or do we create multiple? We were tempted to do, because obviously we have the luxury of, well, 15 cast members, if you include Mm -hmm. our little child, um, that we could do small teaser clips that were maybe a few second flashes that introduce you to each of the characters. Now, what you were saying in terms of visuals earlier and asking that question, like what would you, you know, happen if your your family secrets were revealed or what secrets does this character have? Mm-hmm. And then you see a flash of their face like shocked or whatever. Yeah. Um, is that stuff we should be doing or should we put all of our efforts into a really good trailer or we should try and do it all? I think that here's, it's a great question because I think what I've learned is um, there's a thing just called bandwidth, like meaning like what you're all of us when we're dealing with it, being super uber independent, when we all have a small team or sometimes it's just you by yourself, literally what can you actually do with the time that you have, you know, to do anything? You know, a lot of people are working, you know, full time jobs and this is the stuff that they're doing on the side. They're just trying to make it happen. So when it comes to marketing, the marketing effort, um, the reality is they, they might have this whole laundry list of things that they should be doing or they could be doing, but they can't tackle all of it because it's just they don't have the time or the bandwidth to make it happen. So my feelings are that by ne- zeroing in on the messaging, you know, giving you clarity of what your emotional message and the theme of the movie to connect emotionally with people all over the world with this this message and then making sure that the small bits of uh, graphics and stuff that you put together um uh or resonate with that theme that the whole point is like it gets you really laser focused then when it comes time to make the trailer obviously you need to make a trailer so you just need probably just make to make one and make it really great and make it sure that it 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 really tells you what your what your movie's about and resonates with that theme and then um, from that, you know, you can get on to just finishing the movie, you know, <laughs> like just like, you know, just you just making what counts. And um, there's this, the, the, the Pareto's principle. It's this famous in business. It's called the 80-20 rule. And Pareto uh, was this uh, Italian economist that uh, was looking for um, he realized that like 20 percent of the landowners own 80 percent of the land. And if you notice, this rule kind of is consistent in all business and all life. It's called 
20 people, 20% 20 of something has 80% of the results. So in business and in marketing efforts, what you're trying to get your, your zero in on your focus on like, what is what are 20% of the things that we need to do that we can do that actually will have 80% of a net result? Because uh, the other 80% of your time that you deal with is just busy work. And it doesn't really amount to like much in terms of productivity or output. It only amounts like 20%. So zeroing in on what your 20% is, is really, really important. To me, the 20%, again, is really understanding clear what your, your emotional theme is, your marketing message is, and then building just, just enough content to feed that 20%. And then, then your effort is on a, like a, on a consistent basis. Like every day, we're just going to put out four Instagram posts, and that gets automatically linked to Twitter and Facebook. You know, and then every day or every week we do we promote like a question for the for the Internet that we that we ask, you know, maybe three, four times a day on Twitter. Simply, you know, what family secrets have you or, you know, what family secrets do you have or have you heard about or giving them a place for people to share that. Then the trailer is make sure you just have a great trailer that says this is what our film is about. And this is. The f and not what not only what our film is about, but our film is about what it's about the theme. It's about this universal thing. And that, as long as you can narrow in your edit to fine tune to get to that point where like this is it. I got one trailer. This totally tells what this film is about, and and hopefully we can connect with people on this universal emotional message. Um, then that's we're good with good with that. And then we can just get on with finishing the film. And you can roll out your next plan, which is going to be like, you know, marketing and dis the, the distribution and the rollout of how you can present this film out to the world, how you start selling it, you know, all those types of things. So I don't know if that helps clarify, like, yeah, absolutely. you don't necessarily need to make a bunch of trailers, but if you have the bandwidth and you schedule in the time and goes, you know, I would really like to do this. And I think we can do it over a course of a weekend. And you both say, let's do it. And then you shut out everything else, and just for one weekend, you crank out yeah. fifteen like sh short videos that that you feel comfortable with that resonate with the overall message. Then, by all means, go for it, because then you have that content, and you can repurpose it over and over yeah. and over again. But if it's something that takes up more time than you really want it to, and you realize, you know, it's not really doing much for us, because the one trailer does everything for us. You know, so it's kind of like you have to kind of weigh out that that yeah. those options of like our twenty percent, eighty percent results, things like that. Mm. Anyway, so <laughs> those are something you're gonna have to cross the, the bridge yeah. when you get there. It's like, should we go this route? Or not because really, I think maybe one trailer might be suffice to serve the same eighty percent uh, purpose that it, even if you had twenty versions of it. You know. Um, Anyway, it's hard. Yeah. It's that balance, isn't it? About you read, obviously, we research as much as we can about that some of the channels are about just sort of like <clears throat> repetitive. Like Twitter is such a quick medium that you just need to like put out a lot to even be seen, and let alone the content. And what, on the flip side, you don't want to put out anything that's not quality. So it's like, some of them you sort of think um, should I be focusing on the quality should I be focusing on the quantity because even if, if I'm putting out quality I'm not being seen because it's such a cluttered mm. you know feed so yeah it's quite tough but I like what you said about everything should be on task basically and if it doesn't really sit very well then yeah I think that the dilemma for anybody working in like social media and things like that is Get to a place where you're sharing from like the heart, like like if you're proud of this film, so collect all these like images or create these images or maybe short video clips or something that you're proud of, and then uh, again once you get dialed into what your your emotional marketing message is, um, things will clear be really clear for you because that that way you you're excited to share the message. It's yeah. no longer about the film, you know the film is just a celebration of this bigger concept of what you know what is the purpose of revealing secrets even if they're ugly and they're messy and they cause griff you know is it you know that cathartic you know release you know if that's the result of it and then in, in the marketing world they taught you've heard it before um companies 
are instructed to sell customers benefits and advertise benefits and not features. So the, a, a case in point is like if you ever look at like the Apple commercials, a lot of them, a lot of times they don't really advertise how fast the phone is, how slow the phone is. What they show is people in a, representing some sort of lifestyle and the product they're using is the iPhone. But the emotional takeaway can be impactful. There was that one when uh, the, there's a kid, um, a family, talk about family, they get together for a family Christmas. And this one kid is like this emo, <laughs> like teenager. You don't even know if he's like really interested in the family at all. And you just kind of see him like on his phone and it's like he's not really engaging with, you know, everybody. And at the end of the commercial, he shows everybody that he's been, you know, he's been involved with the family. He's been filming them with the iPhone. And he, he edited this whole family video together using the iPhone iMovie. And the, the whole family sits around. And they're watching this amazing little family movie that this the emo teenage son was putting together. They <laughs> they who thought they they thought wasn't even part of the family, and it was a tearjerker. And the whole yeah. thing was they were showing you the benefits, the world that you can live in if you have this tool. The difference is like Samsung when they do their commercials, it's like. This has got, you know, they start listing off features of like how fast their phone, how big the, the memory is, or how quick you can swipe left, right. And nobody remembers it because it's not tied to an emotional benefit. So when you're dealing with sort of the marketing of what you want to share in social media, you may want to start sharing things that have nothing to do with your film, but you might find like an interesting story online about, um, you know, a family gets together and, you know, they are all they were all arrested at a Chuck E. Cheese's or something, you know, like uh, like in here in America, that happens like where there's family get togethers and they literally have brawls at a kid's pizza place. You know, they, these are articles you can look up that you can grab and you can share and you can say, like, you know, talk about family secrets. Like as long as your every post that you create has some call to action that tells somebody where to go to like share their family secrets. So my my feelings are you need to sort of just create like a, a simple blog post of just a blog that says, you know, share your family secrets or the or there's some crazy stories they've heard, allowing a place for people to share that and then always have the blog sponsored or riddled with like images, you know, saying this blog is sponsored by the time of the season. You know, or you might change the title too. I don't know. It's like, you know, because it might be like, what's the name of the family anyway? What's the last name of the family? The Grandisons. Yeah. Oh my God. That's a nice name. Because <laughs> the, 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 like the, the secrets of the Grandisons or something like that. You know, it's like, you know, it's like it, there's some, I think there might be, you might look at a title. The reason I say that is time of the seasons is sort of benign in a sense of a title. But if you, if you do something like a keyword search, um, you know, there's something much could be much more visceral or, or striking with something like the Grandinson's um, secrets or, or, you know, it's, there's something else that could you, another title may emerge. And um, right. like one of the most famous, the most probably the, the funniest examples of this is a documentary about coffee. And literally the movie is called A Movie About Coffee. <laughs> so they did this because when people are Google searching, you know, they type up a movie about coffee, their keyword pops up, literally, a movie about coffee. And then what they did is like, you know, that was just it's kind of tongue in cheek. Not to say that you can come up with something like that, but what it does is it starts getting you thinking. Like maybe a title change it will direct people to know exactly what this dark comedy is about family secrets redemption something like that you know maybe there's another title that can really you know grab um grab hold again the other films i will send you uh home for the holidays i think is very fitting because it's like when you see home for the holidays and you see like the posters and stuff it looks like a fun romp you know like a fun comedy romp um august osage county i don't know, i'm sure if that's the best title i think it's based off the play the book yeah you know so it's not like that's going to ring. The only re the reason that works is because it has Meryl Streep and Julia Roberts and a bunch of other celebrities. And then the other film is This Is Where I Leave You. Again, I don't necessarily think it might be the best title um, because I wouldn't know if it's a comedy or not a comedy, you know. But if something like like a comedy, 
think about the comedy um, titles. You might like Super Bad. There might be um, Office Christmas Party. There might be, you know what I mean? Like, the, like there are so blatantly in the title, the irony and the, co the comedic value in that. You're like, what does that mean? So there might be something there um, that you might want to revisit too. Again, yeah. again, all this stuff is you're, you're just trying to, where you guys did this amazing job as, uh, you know, assistant directors understanding the world of like organization and being on, on task and on par to get your film made. Now you have to take the same approach to your marketing and um, message and, and what your campaign might look like. Now you got to grab all the stuff together and say, okay, this is our marketing message. Does our title reflect it? Does our images campaign reflect this? Do we have a portal for some place for audiences to go to where they can have the continuing conversation about this overall theme? If we don't have a place for, to send them, if we don't have a call to action, when I say a call to action, it's simply like on your Instagram pictures. If you say, you know, every family has a secret, you know, what if all the secrets revealed one day? Oh, what fun. And then below it says, there's a link that says, you know, share your family secrets at some really simple link at like family secrets, you know, dot net, you know, something where you're just pointing people on Twitter, on Facebook, you know, share your family secrets dot net or something. So I don't know if that URL is available or not, you know, so you can check it about it after we're done here. But now you create a blog from that URL and this is the place, the portal that where you would then, um, share the sales of your movie because if you just send somebody to to a movie site you know it may not have the same value as if there's a an engagement site like you were talking about asking about engagement i think that's the whole concept is now you're yeah. wrapping an engagement around this theme um so yeah i think in terms of focusing in that way you might that might be beneficial uh, let's see here um let me look at your last few questions real quick. Because actually, I know we're running a little long, we're at an hour and a half here. Um, and I actually just. <laughs> it's so good. No, I know. It's like I just got a call. I have to call my agent back. I saw so Hollywood. No, it's, I have my agent. I, I, I think this is a, a callback I got to deal with. Anyway, um, so you were asking about blogs and a website and a mailing list. Well, that would be the same thing. You definitely yeah. want to have. Now, dealing with mailing lists. The, the basic concept is you have to have some sort of free offer, some free giveaway, not just not just something like, hey, sign up for our newsletter and we'll share you updates about the film. Again, if people are coming there to share their family secrets or to, to read about other people's family secrets, um, the film is not necessarily the main thing they're coming for, which is fine, which is totally fine because you're, you're building a interested, loyal audience. If you offer something on your blog or your website, that simply says, you know, here are the top 10 most wildest, you know, family secrets ever revealed. And it's just a PDF that, you, that you've taken the time to curate or ask friends or, you, you know, do some research of like some crazy stories. Just say 10 crazy stories and then you offer this as a free giveaway. So it says enter your email to get this free, you know, you know guide to the 10 most outrageous family, you know, secrets ever, ever revealed. And then somebody says, oh, okay. So I type my email. I get this um, confirmation to be on your email list. And then you send them, the, they, there's a link for them to see the PDF. Again, top 10 is just helpful because it's not like, here's a whole ebook of 50 pages that nobody's going to read. Like the, if you say it's only one page or two pages, that's short enough for people to digest the content. Yeah. So as they're reading the content, it might be like, some crazy story about Cleopatra or something like all these historical, you know, secrets of family secrets that were just outrageous. And they're reading this. And at the end, and I'm in the top, you can brand and promote your film. Because if you want to see more family secrets, then please enjoy our film, you know, time of uh, the season or whatever the name of the new title is, the Grandisons, you know, uh, the Grandisons, you know, uh, God, that name has to me. To me, that sounds like it should be in the title, but I don't know. There's some pun or some play you can do with that. I don't know how it is, but I know it's the tip of my tongue. Anyway, so you have that. That's another form of promoting your film. You know, so these are ways that are doable. Again, and as long as you're doing the social media from an authentic place, where you actually are excited about what you're sharing, that you're not feeling like you're spamming people. You know, like it's like for the day, like I can't wait to share this secret. Like, you're just being kind of like gossips, you know, <laughs> or whatever. Like what what you normally would share anyway. But if you can mm -hmm. 
add in there like i would love to share this you know i would love yeah. to share this concept because obviously you made the film wrote the film from someplace authentic so there's some yeah. interest in there for you so as long as you do that you're you won't feel like you're selling out and it, and you you're, you're you're actually feel more connected to the film you made than if you don't do this so um let me see here uh as we wrap up okay so we're talking, oh go ahead go ahead the, the like the last bit is about the last bit is like how do we build towards the release mm. and what do we do in terms of distributing it what route would you suggest and how would you do it because we haven't we've kind of got a few things we might pursue but we really don't know what we're doing in terms of getting the film out to people okay i'm going to give the if you give us the quick um <laughs> This is probably like another hour. Yeah. No, 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 no. We get, I can make it as simple. I'll, I'll do my best to simplify this as much as possible here. If you decide not to take it to a film festival, which is fine, because what we're seeing with film festivals is that um, you might go to a film festival and you might get it, you know, your film into the film festival and um, you don't know where the venue is. You don't know where your movie is going to play at what time. You know, it could be like in the middle of the day at some elementary school that they set up some chairs. You know what I mean? You have no idea. So you're like, oh, wow, this is not kind of the premiere that I was expecting, you know, uh, or like where to show my movie. And you might have 10 people show up. You're like, uh, so you're part of the film festival, but you're not, you know, it may not go as well as you plan because a lot of things out of your control. Um, the way you can control it is that usually in film festivals is, is like bring as many friends and family. The good thing is you have a cast of 14 people plus, you know, so the idea is that they will bring all their friends and family. <laughs> so you yeah. have like you have a, an opportunity instead of a film with like two people in it. Now you have like there's a better chance you could have more people show up. And if but, any of them are listening, that's what you'll be doing. Yes, yes. please. <laughs> <laughs> so here's there's another concept. The, the benefit of film festival is one people are trying to get discovered or they use it as leverage of like, I just need to get you know, win a few awards. But if you notice, as fans of like independent film, are we ever really convinced by a film that shows up that won, you know, best movie or best narrative or best director award at some festival we never heard of before? It's like, you know, like we could tell, like we have enough to taste that when we see a movie trailer, whether or not it's something we're going to watch or not, no matter how many laurels you put up there. Um, but the difference is, if you can somehow muster some sort of um, quote or blurb from some reputable uh, person in the community in London area um, in the film world, or it doesn't have to be in the film world. Maybe it's a famous author or a famous like uh, athlete. Somebody in your pool of people that you are working with and the friends and family must know somebody. And the, re the, the thinking behind here is saying like, say there's a very well-known like – athlete that has a big family or had or just i don't know it some, some has some sort of clout if you can get them to review your film a little bit and have them leave a blurb then you can imagine like then you cut your trailer together instead of showing laurel leaves like you know official selection in some no-name theater or i'm sorry yeah. no-name festival if it said you know one of the funniest outrageous films i've seen this year you know from I don't know, somebody famous like Benedict Cumberbatch, you know, whatever, you know, it's like, they were saying like, it's like, if what, you know, it's like, but, uh, or you can do the whole point is if you can get some legitimacy with like two or three of those blurbs, it's the same concept of somebody opening up a book and the, yeah. you know, and you read the book, there's always these blurbs like Stephen King or, you know, J, J, uh, J, R, um, JK Rowling's, you know, it's just like, if you see those people had read the book, you're like, okay, that, that gives it some validity, some, you know, so the same concept could be done for your movie. So if there's some mm -hmm. way you could do that, instead of getting laurel leaves, you probably save a lot more money and you actually have more impact because then it's different because we're so bombarded with like official selection, winner of these things. And like that, that and unless it's one of the big ones that the yeah. whole world has heard about. Right. It yeah. really doesn't have unless much Unless you're getting clout. into Sundance, really. Yeah. That's like, yeah, yeah. you've got no chance. Yeah. So, you know, um, so obviously you can go for the big ones, but that's it. Like, the other ones that don't, they're not going to have that much validity towards um, um, the sales. Mm. There is a film festivals are interesting because it's a crapshoot because you can go to some no name film festival and somebody 
some executive that had grown up in that town has come back and is doing a panel and they might see your film or something and be like, oh, I want to talk to you about some something else we're working on. Sometimes those things happen. Um, again, those are low probability, which if I have a past podcast, which I talk about 10 ways that inc- uh, filmmakers can increase their luck and scientists don't call it luck. They call it probability, either high probability or low probability. So there's probably a low probability that there's going to be some well-known executive at one of these smaller festivals that are going to see your film out of all the films and decide to have you direct the next thing, you know, but to and Scott, you did a really amazing sports analogy that I don't quite understand as a British person to set that episode up. So I oh. would listen to it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was about the Pittsburgh Steelers and some sort of immaculate. Right. Reception. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. 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 Sorry. So that's yeah, this crazy, the probability of that happening, it had to be so extremely low it's just crazy that it happened but the it's just the, the way the probabilities work but you can increase your probability by saying i can control like the feedback we get if we can get some good blurbs by reputable people then this is something that increases the probability that it gives it validity the other thing you can do is you can do your own premiere just one premiere and then you know you have 14 cast members and things like that but make it an event Make it an event about something else besides your movie. The movie is just a celebration. It could be a networking event with other filmmakers in town. Um, it could be and celebrating them. It could be um, a, a cause or something like, you know, we're getting together for this event to uh, help, you know, raise money for some, you know, uh, f- some family crisis, you know, emergency aid thing or whatever. You know, you, you might – Pair it up with, a, you know, and here's a fun movie about some crazy family. The whole point is like as long as you put an event together where you know that the main purpose is that everybody who shows up there has to have a good time. As long as they come away knowing that they're going to have a good time, the movie is just sort of a nice little celebration of that, you know, because mm-hmm. you want to have them everything. You, you want to make sure that the parking is easy, easily available, food, drinks, a nice party afterwards, all that kind of stuff is – where the night just felt great, or maybe you were networking with people where you're introducing people, and so you become this conduit where people can congregate. Um, the most important thing about that film, that film premiere, you can do one film premiere in your local town, is make sure you take plenty of photographs, hire a photographer or get somebody, and plenty of video, and get as many video testimonials as possible, as hopefully not of the cast, but if it's like the cast family or something like that. And what you're doing is, when you're finished, you have all this footage, all this media that you can now use to construct ads. You know, like so when you're when you're going to release the film, eventually, say you want to start selling it online. Now you have these little bits of you know content that you can use to show the celebration of like this film had a really good premiere and it you know all these people's feedback and you know look all that great time you know and maybe even footage of people in the audience laughing you know things like that. It's it, it it just helps sell what you have, you know, and um, so the release strategy at that point is if you um, if you want to get on, say you're just going to go straight to like video on demand and or SV like all those different video on demand platforms, be it like iTunes, be it Amazon um, and other, you know, online platforms. Maybe it's Vimeo, VHX. There's I think there's. Um, Distrify, I think, is a, another global one. There's all these different ones in, in Europe keep popping up. Um, all of them have the same principle, which is you need to announce a launch date, a release date of when your film is going to come out. And does it come out um, around the same time of a, a national holiday? And look at your competition. Is it during the summer where everybody's out and about and they're looking at blockbuster movies? Or they're waiting, are you waiting for the fall? When there's a dip in people's appetite for movies, uh, or is it around like a family event, or is it around like uh, uh, you know some holiday or something like that? You have to kind of gauge where you, when you want to release it. Um, once you make that determination, what's going to be best for you guys, then you just kind of move forward with it. Now you have a date in mind you got to get to. Yeah. So the whole point is, but you have all this content you've created. You had a premiere. You have footage you can advertise. But all these platforms operate in the same kind of basic concept. You can't just like throw it up online, hit publish, and say now it's for sale, because there's no ante- anticipation to the launch. You know, if we look at Hollywood, 
you know, a couple of weeks out, they start really pumping out the trailers. You start seeing more ads, you know, about the movie. It's coming. It's coming this opening this weekend, opening this weekend. And they drive everything towards the focus of the opening weekend to get as much buzz and as, as much money as possible because they need to use that. That's their version of having a theatrical premiere, right? Uh, and they're using all the press and all the money to show like this, like they're going to say like this weekend, the Beauty and the Beast is the number one movie in the world, you know, whatever it is. And that will carry hopefully for weeks on weeks, but it also carry, you know, by the time when they release it onto like DVD and on video demand, because that way they can say, you know, um, the movie you've been waiting for is now on, you know, video on demand. So, the, but the whole point is it's been trickled into our brains. Obviously independents won't have that scope. They won't have that, that, that breadth of like media onslaught. So what you have to do is kind of work local and work your online presence as much as possible, but you need to create an event for them. So somebody who's been following like, you know, familysecrets.com or hashtag family secrets, um, sees that your film is going to be released. You know, they can finally see it. Uh, as long as you build it up and let them people know, the, the most ideal thing is on your email list. If you have a really healthy email list, then you can deliver this content, uh, like you trickle it out, like say uh, four weeks, six weeks before you release it. The first week it's like, it's coming on this date and here's the countdown. And we have so many fun things planned in the next six weeks to get you excited about the movie coming out. Um, and those are the, you, then you have to reverse engineer from the day you release to the, the time you start announcing it. It's figure out the creative content, the, the creative useful content that you might uh, release to your fan base. Um, it might be small. It might be only a, a few hundred, might be a few thousand or whatever. That'd be fantastic. But as long as you, you work with what you have, you know, <laughs> so you work towards this launch. Um, and again, I was going to mention the, the way the platforms work is that one thing you could do you might have heard me this before in some other podcasts, is create your film release launch group. So you take 100 people and you, and you tell them, like, you are part of this pre-release launch group. When we release this film onto iTunes and, and Vimeo and Amazon, um, we need your help. And we know specifically what you're going to do for us is you 100 people. One, we need you to pre-order our movie on iTunes and Amazon and like Vimeo. And we are actually going to give you, and you have a little thing here in the questions you asked me, like, well, how much money do you spend for this? You actually may need to set aside, you know, X amount of hundreds of dollars aside to create sort of um, um, like vouchers for them. So if I'm like on your, on your pre-release launch group here, I might, you might send me like, okay, here's a 99 cents voucher or a gift card for iTunes. Here's a 99 cents gift card for, you know, Amazon and a 99 cents card for uh, Vimeo. We need you to use these gift cards to pre-order our film, you know, at 99 cents a pop, whatever it is. Cause you can control the, sp you can control the price initially. The idea is that you, you, you launch the, the, um, the movie at a discounted price for those loyal people. And then after a week or so, then you raise it to the normal price or whatever it might be, three ninety nine, nine ninety nine. Um, but you, the instructions of the launch group is not only to pre-order your movie, um, but they also need to leave a ratings and review on all the platforms, on iTunes, on Amazon, on Vimeo. Now Vimeo, they have to have like an account, and you know they have to you know then you know write in. Uh, I am um, Amazon actually utilizes um, not only the Amazon comment section but they're they also own imdb the internet movie database so people might have to sign up an account with imdb to then leave a, a ratings and review of your film on imdb so you may have to make sure your page is set up for your film on imdb because imdb and amazon are closely they're they're, they're owned they're the same company they're, so they have to they're closely related itunes relies not only on the itunes sort of review section but sometimes they they uh, get crossed over to Rotten Tomatoes, so um, I ha I'm I'm due to do like a, a more extensive podcast on this of like how you can get your movie rated by iTunes, uh, Rotten Tomatoes. But essentially, you need to like figure out a way to get your film to uh, some selective, qualified uh, film critics that you know somebody who writes for like the London Times, I don't know whatever that maybe you have a connection with that you bribe them and <laughs> say, look, will you review our film 
in exchange for, you know, a donation to your favorite charity. You know, like you, you kind of have to make the effort to just make the ask. They'll probably say no, but if you only need a few yeses. So you need yeah. like maybe say three people, three notable publications around the, around the world um, that are tied to Rotten Tomatoes. So that because Rotten Tomatoes is going to grab like publications from, you know, if, if it's posted in like one of their blog posts, your film, then they will then, you know, there's a way to to get it tied in to their system. And then the Rotten Tomatoes has all the user reviews. So then the same hundred people that are part of your group will have to also leave a ratings review in Rotten Tomatoes. Sounds like a lot of work, but if you can make it fun for them, if you do it on a weekly basis, it's like, okay, you're part of this hundred, you know, person group of our pre launch group. We want, you know, the first week we want you to do is just pre-order from iTunes. Okay. And this is how you do it. Make it real simple for them. The next week is now we need you to leave a ratings review and this is how you do it. You have to show them how to do it. You, you have to tell them exactly how to do it. And then you got to follow up with them because I can't tell you how many people are going to be in your group that won't do any of it. So you have <laughs> to hustle. It's kind of a reverse sort of crowdfunding campaign because crowdfunding campaigns are like you put it out there and you're hustling and you're hustling and you're like, God, we're almost there. We're almost making our mark. The difference is, is now it's, it's, it's the same kind of effort, but now you're pushing everybody of the small hundred people that are going to be in your group to do certain things. Um, cause you might only get about 67 people or 65 people that actually do it. The other 35 people, well, you never heard from them. You know, it's just really mm -hmm. weird that way. Again, the whole concept here is by the time you say release, it goes out to the market. You had already built up, you know, a hundred, hopefully a hundred ratings review of your movie on these different platforms. And, and now it's live. And then once it's live, you have to go into a whole nother marketing mode, which is like telling the world, like, we did it. We're on iTunes. We're on Amazon. We're on Vimeo or whatever. And we're having so much fun. And like, you know, you can order, you know, get your copy now. And that's when you raise the price to your normal prices. But you can utilize, like, look at the reviews we're getting. We got from the LA, you know, London Times or like, you know, and here's, we got five-star ratings. And, you know, yes, here's the, the sad truth about all this marketing stuff. It's a little bullshit. It's a little smoke and mirrors. You know what I mean? But let's let's not kid ourselves because the way these big companies work, they work the same way. Mm -hmm. They, you know, there's there's really nothing authentic and organic about the way these companies work. I was talking to a friend of mine who was talking about the music industry. You know, don't kid yourself when you see like a album go platinum. You know, there's a lot of times the record companies are paying um, for that album to go platinum because once it goes platinum. They're able to use that as a marketing tool than to drive people that go, oh, I guess it's worth something. Maybe I'll buy it now. <laughs> Believe me, that stuff happens. So we we got to be adults about this and say, you know, this is sort of the world we live in. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors in the, how this marketing stuff works. And this is one way to do it. Yeah, you have friends and family that are part of a group, that you, but you were nurturing this. But as soon as you get that going, if you can make it a dent within those platforms that showed – a decent amount of pre-sales, pre-orders, and a decent amount of ratings and reviews, those are marketing things that you can use later to sell to the general public, to just let, kind of let it you know, roll out that way. I didn't do it with my film. These are things that I learned later. I'm like, ah, oh, crap, I should have done that. <laughs> you know, so, uh, but I've seen other people do it. So if you're trying to figure out what your marketing strategy should be, it should be that. So yeah. my feelings okay. are the takeaways or get real, real clear about what the theme of your movie and how that can be used as your marketing message. As long as it's an emotional, carnal connection to anybody. And then once you figure out what that emotional messaging is, that will reveal who your true audience is, who your true targeted audience is. And then, um, in yeah, don't over, don't do overkill. Like just do enough of in the twenty percent that's going to have a great greater impact, the eighty percent result. You know, uh, and really zeroing on that marketing message and that emotional message. And then that way you build these little platforms in place um, that are outside of your film. Because like really what's what's important is the theme because the theme is the greater message. And your film is an amplifier for this theme. So the it's your film is a celebration of whatever this theme is. And then from there, now you have a release strategy because, you know, like, well, if we're going to have to do this by ourselves, 
at least we're not just going to blindly put it up online and cross our fingers and drive people, you know, traffic to our site, hoping they buy our film. You know, the honest truth is people probably won't just buy your film just to buy your film. Your friends and family and people involved in the film might be. And that's why you'll, you'll see minuscule sales. But if you sell a bigger idea, if you sell this idea of like family secrets or, you know, transformation from secrets or whatever it might be, that could drive sales in a greater, you know, a longer, a long tail approach to it. Yeah. But I think a lot of filmmakers are in the same boat. So as long as they can come away, like really looking at their film project and go, how do I tackle this? Well, well, let's, let's revisit these things again. Um, Mm -hmm. It's really interesting because we are, as filmmakers, we should be really good storytellers. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? We should be. I mean, a lot of us are probably, I think we're in this generation of a lot of technical videographers that are filmmakers, um, which is fine because it's like the birth of like the Vimeo revolution. It's the Vimeo uh, audience showing like, hey, test footage, my latest camera. And that turns into, you know, wedding videos or whatever it might be. And then they start learning story. It's like, oh, wait a minute. I got to learn how to tell story better. The interesting thing is like we're in this verge of this of this this moment in time, I think, where filmmakers now could learn how not only to tell good stories for the stories that they're making, like their film, now they have to learn how to tell good stories on the marketing side of things. And if you listen to any like marketing expert and, th- and, and all these ad weeks and things like this, they're always talking about how they're learning from Hollywood how to tell be- better stories. In their world, a marketer is like, how do I tell better stories? I'm a storyteller. The funny thing is like independent filmmakers should be crushing it if they are tr- if they are really truly tied into their storytelling capabilities should be able to tell a really good story online but it's just a different medium and the medium is you know your Instagram posts your Twitter your tweets your Facebook posts and how you construct this 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 world how you control the world of how you want to tell that story to an audience um, so that'll be the challenge for all of us but um, but I think it's 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 neat because I don't know. I, I don't think a lot of stuff is taught anywhere in film school. So, <laughs> they only yeah. Well, I never went to film school. I only went to university. But they would never have taught me this at university. <laughs> I think possibly now you might find there's a lot more courses um, to do with film marketing and dis- distribution and you know the film business side of things, but. A lot of people who grow up on, you know, film studies and film school, it's all about the craft. It's not about the execution when it gets out into the world. It's like if you make the product good enough, then if you build it, they will come. But actually, no, you have to build it and then you have to sell it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, I, I think I'll probably end up doing is cutting this up in two halves. So I'll do like part one, part two, make it easier for people to digest um, instead of like sitting through like a two and able to easier to find certain things. But um Thank you guys for taking the time to at least put your film out there for for us to workshop, you know, collectively. Um, again, you know, these I think the takeaway from my perspective is, you know, it's just should, it's just should be enough to get going to kind of point you in the right direction. And, you know, yeah. and there's and then that should open up more questions for you, because as you go down the rabbit hole, you're going to ask. Yeah, us, that's yeah. Awesome. it's really kind of opened up to how much like how little we've kind of delved into it really we need to go much deeper and kind of think more intellectually about it really i don't think we would have got to some of the conclusions or some of the questions without you yeah absolutely being the outsider with the the knowledge so yeah. i'm quite pleased that you agreed to talk yeah thank us. you very much honestly no we really appreciate it this has been this has been, this has been great thank you <laughs> <laughs> no problem you to lay in bed tonight, honestly like, no it's like, just great oh i'm gonna lie in bed going oh, i know nothing about my film <laughs> 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 might as well go back to set and be and a you'll PA be, you'll be watching like the time of the season stuff sort of slowly adapt to yeah. everything you've said <laughs> well you'll be I know that I know the audience which I need to do better is a follow up so please mm-hmm. keep us in posted like in a yeah. few months say okay we from the session this is what we we came away with and we made some changes and we here's some of the results that worked and what didn't work um, I think having you guys come back would be really important because hearing Absolutely. how it's implemented is going to think it'd be greater impact than just like, here it is theoretically. Like, I think that we're at this point. Here's the theoretical game plan. But now, like, what happens? Like, so it'd be really important to have you guys come back in a couple months, you know? 
we'd love to come back if you'd have us yeah that'd be great and we'll oh. make make sure that as that's something we're working towards we'll make some notes and keep you know keep some records so that we can come back and say we did this here and this worked here and so that you you can have some actual stats and timelines yeah. and things about how we did stuff it'd be wicked yeah and you know what have fun with it i mean honestly you know it's it, it's a it's a beast to get a, a movie finished and well, you're honestly, like i am done but- it's insane. Obviously, as I said to you earlier, everyone said that we could never do it. So the fact that we've actually done it and we've gotten this far is just incredible. So for now, we're kind of thinking, actually, you know, shit, we actually need to try and release this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. very, very it real. Out. It's like it's all suddenly become incredibly real. Like this just set, <laughs> yeah. Now, here's the thing. You guys are young enough, which is fantastic in terms of I would approach this whole process of when you you made your film and you're getting it out to the world like, you know, I'm sure you probably have some benchmarks. Like it'll be a success if we can make X amount of money or make our money back. Or, but the bigger underlying value to take away from all this stuff is an opportunity to go through the process and learn the process. Because once you go through it once, you're yeah. gonna be. I guarantee you're gonna be like, I know I have yeah. an idea for the next movie, but I know how we could do it better. You know, it's like Absolutely. or no, like not better, but like here's a something that could be using what we just what we just learned and what we implemented what worked and what didn't work i think mm-hmm. this this next one could be much better this way and that's yeah. what you kind of have to brace yourself like the long haul like we have to we we have to plunge through we have to test it we have to see what works what doesn't work what we're capable of of you know what are what we're really capable of in our terms of our bandwidth to you know get done and not get done and then when we get through it you know maybe get to the end reassess and say yeah. oh wait okay when we, let's, when we do it again, I, I I have I have an idea of how we could do this even more yeah. efficient or, or better. Yeah, ready. Yeah. I think there's a list as long as our arm like, yeah, yeah. of things that we could have. Why didn't we do that? Or yeah. why? Like one of the things that I really hate looking back on now is the opportunity we had to get so many behind the scenes photos and videos yeah. and stuff. We really didn't capitalize yeah. on it, which would have been great content by now. The stuff we did was great, but we bare, we did it almost flippantly rather than like business heads on like what can we you know what can we film here what can we photograph what content can we get so that two months down the line when we launch our social media we have stuff to share because we've got 14 cast members we could have interviewed or or put them to work you're gonna put i mean honestly you're gonna put them to work like look if you're not on on camera you we need you to start filming this phone just film something you know just like even if it's you two talking or having like a surreal chat about something we don't care just we want you know so there's already loads of stuff but as you said you learn from it so next time easier (laughs) maybe not easy better right right no it's all good well it's a pleasure to meet both of you and i i wish you the best of luck but you know me it's not luck it's i wish you high probability low probability probability is like it may not happen i'm gonna wish you high probability the highest form of probability you could possibly get yes We'll keep in touch with you and just keep you updated and stuff. Do the same with us. If there's anything you need from us, then please let us know. But otherwise, we'll wait to hear from you. It. No, great. Go out and sit like this, listening to it. <laughs> no, no, it's great. I think it's fantastic. Sometimes I, it's just been. It's fun to 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 see where somebody is and and I know. I mean, there's I there's so many filmmakers that are gonna really just connect in a sense of like I'm in the same boat. But to hear all this stuff, it's like okay, you know, it's just. That we're not alone and this again is probably the theme of the family or the or the story it's like not being alone even if things are crazy and out of control sometimes you realize that hey i'm not alone my, you know my family is just as crazy as everybody else's you know <laughs> <laughs> okay all, all right, right. Thank, you thank you very much scott that's been brilliant thank you thank you so See much you guys <laughs> Bye. If you like this interview, please think about leaving a ratings and review over in iTunes for me. Just go to filmtrooper.com forward slash iTunes. That will take you to the iTunes page. And any ratings and review would be very, very helpful in spreading the word about this particular podcast. And of course, don't go away empty handed because I have a free gift for you over at freegearguide.com. It's an equipment list of everything I use to make a feature film for $500 without a crew. Again, that's at freegearguide.com. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I will see you next time. Film Trooper, filmmaking freedom for the independent.